G'day everyone and welcome to another Minecraft build tutorial. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create the ultimate super smelter that can smelt an entire stack of items in only 45 seconds, and it looks good doing it. Something that I dislike about a lot of super smelter tutorials and things along those lines is that they are almost always a giant eyesore. So a strong passion of mine is to make those things into something that is a great addition to your world, aesthetics wise and usefulness wise, if that makes any sense. All right guys, and just before we get into the tour of the build, we have our first ever sponsor of the channel. Jaws Block is a brand new Skyblock server with a small but friendly community. Work your way through over 300 quests, battle through tough dungeons, unlock incredible custom gear and rank up through in-game rank and unlock cool perks. Compete for the top spots on the leaderboards or play casually through the server campaign. With a no pay to win policy, you get the best chance of winning without having to spend a single dollar. Be sure to check out the description below for the IP to the server and more. A big thanks to them for supporting the channel. Go show the server some love. All right, now onto the tour. All right, so before we get into how exactly this whole thing works, I wanna take a quick look around the aesthetics and all of the exterior. So you might notice that this build does look pretty neutral. It is all spruce and a little bit of stone on the trims of the roofs. And this is intentional. I really couldn't figure out a final design block palette to use with this build. So I just went with a pretty neutral one and I highly encourage you guys to stylize this and make this build your own. Make it suit the biome that you're in or any kind of specific layout. But for this tutorial, I will be going with this neutral kind of look. That does work and looks good pretty much anywhere. Also, you might have noticed that there is a lot of windows on this and that is so that you can pretty much always see inside and see your minecarts going and keep track of everything. You can, of course, replace all of these glass and fence blocks with something else that isn't transparent. So now let's head over to the very front entrance of the design. And here you can see we also have our entrance, well, obviously, into the actual base. But before we head inside, let's take a look at all of these levers and the chests and exactly what they do. So our bottom most chests on either side here are our output chests. This is where our smelted final product will end up. And then also up here is our input chests. So our outermost chests, this one and this one are the fuel input chests. So in here you'd be putting in your coal or lava buckets or whatever the hell you use. And then beside those, the innermost chests is where you'll put in your item to be smelted. You can of course keep track of this by using some item frames or you can just memorize it. It's entirely up to you. And then all of these levers here all they do is power the powered rails that they're facing into that send the minecarts on their way and turn on the super smelter itself. So now let's head inside and take a look at exactly how this is all set up and how it works. So the reason why we have these two separated sides of all of these chests is that we have two separate super smelters inside of this one build. Now on each side, we have a total of 10 furnaces and this gives us a really quick smelting speed for either side. And the reason why we have two separate sides is so that you're able to smelt two different things at the same time. So say you have some iron and also some copper that you want to smelt at the same time, you can go ahead and do that and chuck those into each side and you can keep them separate throughout the entire process. Also, if you just have a bunch of iron, you can chuck it in here, you can chuck it in here as well and it'll smelt at double the speed as it would in one single side. And even if you wanted to, you could combine all of this into one single super smelter. All you'd have to do is just link up these furnaces together and figure out the rail system to link it all back up. So in here, you can see this is where our minecart hoppers stay and and these are on some powered rails. Right now they're off because our levers are turned off. But once we turn these on, and I'll go ahead and turn these on now, you'll see that these hoppers go on their way and they pretty much just make a loop. They go between the starting position and then over here, which is the end position, and they loop between them, which is what allows them to deposit the items evenly across all of the furnaces. I'm just gonna turn these off because they're pretty loud and annoying. And yeah, so we pretty much just have this repeated design on either side and that pretty much covers it for the tour. It is just a simple super smelter design that you'll find in pretty much any design, except we just have two of them inside of the same building. So with that done and out of the way, if you wanna create the super smelter for yourself, feel free to stick around and we'll get started on the tutorial right now. All right, so starting off, you will of course need to find a pretty flat open area. And then we're going to begin by placing in the outline of all of the pillars. Next, let's go ahead and raise up all of these pillars by an additional four blocks so that they're all five blocks high in total. Now 
exits onto all of the wall designs and we're first starting off with the right side of the entrance. So one block above the ground, let's place in some upside down spruce stairs. Below that, some spruce trap doors and also some stone along the bottom. Now with a two block gap in between these stairs, let's add in some spruce slabs and then some fences on either side and then finally some glass in the sink. And now we're pretty much just gonna repeat this exact same thing across all of the walls, except it's just gonna be lengthened to suit the amount of wall that we need. And now with all of the walls done, let's grab out the scaffolding and head up and create the trim of the very front roof. So this is all pretty much made out of stone slabs and towards the top in the middle, we will be transitioning into stairs and then back into slabs. Next, let's go ahead and repeat this exact same trim design on the right side wall. And the only thing that's gonna be different is in the very top in the center, we'll be making it an additional slab high so that it's a full block. And then of course, head over to the final side and repeat that exact same design once again. Next up, it's time to fill in the main roof. And to do this, we will pretty much just be connecting up all of the trims together with your block of choice. For this version, we'll be going with spruce slabs and stairs. Now with the roof done, let's go ahead and replace all of the grass on the interior with some stone. All right, so now with the bulk of the build done, it's time to get into the finer details and we're gonna be starting off with the front wall. So to begin, we're gonna be placing in our chests and we're gonna be placing these in in some specific locations. So be sure to follow exactly along as how I am. So our first double chest is gonna be in line with this first trap door here on the wall. And then we're gonna place another one directly to the right of that. And then let's mirror this on the opposite side as well. And then we're gonna leave a gap of two blocks and then place our next chest. So this is gonna be in line with the top of the fence here and then we're going to place another one in line with the window here and then coming away from this we're going to add in another double chest and now let's just quickly mirror this on the other side now let's head back out this way and now we're going to add in our main kind of pillars for the front area so our first pillar is going to be in line with these pillars and to place these we're going to first place in one block like this kind of just leaving this slab right here and we're going to place in an additional two more blocks just like this then behind this in the middle we're going to add another block here and then another one 
and another one and another one until we bring it down in line with these chests. Now directly below this we're going to add an upside down spruce stair block and then on the left and right we're going to add in some more pillars and connect them up to the side walls. Now for the final pillars we're just going to add some to the right of this chest here connected up to the main pillar system here and then we're going to do the same on this side as well. So now you should have this final shape. Next, let's go ahead and fix up these gaps here. And to do this, we're going to place in some upside down spruce stairs on these two blocks. And then in front of each of these, we're gonna place in a spruce trapdoor. And in the middle, we may as well chuck in our lantern just to brighten things up a bit. Now let's head onto the inside and directly above this bottom chest here, we're gonna place in an upside down spruce stair. Let's do the same on this side as well. And now let's grab out some scaffolding. We're probably gonna need maybe three or four in total. And we're gonna head up here. And then on top of all of these double chests, we're going to play, this might be kind of hard to do this but we're gonna place some regular stairs like this they're not upside down or anything just like that just to cover up the gaps and now while we're in here we may as well add in the rest of the stuff as well so let's go ahead and bring our scaffolding back a little bit just so we can see a little easier so now in front of each of these stair blocks we're gonna add in some more spruce trap doors just like this and then in between these two chests here let's place in an additional stripped spruce wood block now we can destroy our scaffolding and jump down and then in front of each of these chests here let's place on another spruce trap door and then we're gonna go ahead and close all of these up as well and then we're also going to add a lantern just below this block here. Now we're done for now for the front wall on the inside so let's head back out here and then the final thing that we're going to do is actually uh, head back in I'm sorry and we're going to add in our door real quick just like that. And now to finish off the front wall let's go ahead and add some levers on these blocks here and then this is where you can go ahead and add in some item frames on these chests and also these chests if you want as well. So the fuel chests are going to be the ones on the sides so this chest and this chest just the the outermost chests and to mark it as fuel I like to just use some coal obviously and then the ones beside those the ones closest to the inside are going to be our input for the ores. And to mark this out, I like to use just some raw iron. And then if you wanted to mark the output chest, you can go ahead and chuck some item frames on them as well and just put on an iron ingot. And yeah, you can of course change these to whatever you want. You can have them empty. I'm just gonna leave them empty because I kind of prefer that look because in survival, you can't really get the invisible item frames. If you do want those, I will have the command for that in the description. All right, so now we're completely done with all of the exterior of the build. And now it's time to head inside and create all of the redstone and the tracks and all of that stuff. All right, so all of this stuff from here on out is going to be very complex and kind of complicated. So be sure to follow along exactly as I'm placing them. But if you do have any issues, feel free to post a comment and I will try to help you out the best I can. So each of these sides are gonna be exactly the same as each other, just mirrored. And we're gonna start off with the right side of the build if you're facing like this way, we're gonna be starting off with the right side. So first what we're going to go ahead and do is create our hopper line that goes from the output chests into the furnaces. So let's go ahead and hold shift and place in just a bunch of hoppers until we reach this area here. We're going to have a one block gap between the wall and the hoppers. And then we're going to create two rows of more hoppers that extend this way towards the edge of the build. And we're also going to once again stop with a one block gap in between the wall and the hoppers like this. Now starting from the end here, we're going to place in our furnaces on top of all these hoppers. We're going to be placing five in total on each side. And then this should leave you with a two hopper gap at the ends. Now behind all of these furnaces, we're going to be adding in some more hoppers. And this is going to be for our fuel input. So be sure to hold shift and right click directly on the back of the furnaces. Make sure you're right clicking the back and not the hopper as the hopper is not going to point the right way. So just make sure to right click at the back of all of the furnaces and confirm that all of the hoppers are facing the right way. Let's go ahead and quickly repeat this on the other side once again. And now we're going to do the same thing, but on top of all of the furnaces. So just right click on top of all of these furnaces, do the same on this side as well. And now with this done, let's go ahead and just quickly mirror this on the other side while we're at it. So once again, we're going to extend all of these hoppers directly to the back, leaving a one block gap. Let's bring these to the edges as well. Two rows just like this. Now, starting from the ends, let's add on our five furnaces on either side. And then on the backs, our hoppers. And the hoppers on the tops as well. All right, now let's head back over to this side. Let's go ahead and add in all of our rail systems. So to do this, we're going to grab out some spruce slabs or your slabs of choice. 
doesn't really matter. And we're gonna create basically a big platform that connects up to this furnace here. So we're gonna place in two like this and another two to the right of it. Then let's connect this up all the way above this chest and below these chests. And then we're gonna extend it out one block again. So we create this kind of L shape of slabs. Then let's head around to the back over here and we're gonna cover in all of this little gap here with some more spruce slabs. Except for in this middle one here, we're going to be replacing this with a block of redstone. Then let's also go ahead and add in a spruce slab in between these two hoppers at the end right here. And now it's time to go ahead and add in all of our rails. So be sure to place these exactly as I am or else you're gonna have issues. As you can see, if you kind of leave it like this, they're gonna join up and you're gonna have a bad time. So just be sure to follow along exactly as I am. We're gonna start off with the fuel track first. So let's go ahead and bring this all the way around. So we're gonna place a powered rail right here. And then we're going to go with a couple of non-powered rails until we reach right here. So it's just three regular rails after this powered rail. And then we're gonna place another powered rail on this corner block right here. Now let's keep going along all of these hoppers. Be sure to hold shift while you're placing these. And these are all just regular rails all the way up until we reach this block of redstone here, which is going to be another powered rail. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna bring these rails all the way along to the end of the hoppers right here. And this last block is actually gonna be a powered rail, my bad. All right, now let's do the same thing for the input for all of the ores. And so we're going to once again, start off the line with a powered rail. And then we're gonna extend some normal rails all the way down along here. And then in line with this rail here, we're gonna place another powered rail. And now we're gonna bring our rails on top of all of these hoppers. So let's bring them all the way along like this. And then we're gonna keep going. We're not gonna use a powered rail here as it's got enough power. So just bring it all the way up along these hoppers. And then on the final one, a powered rail. Now while we're up here, let's go ahead and power all of these rails that we need to power. And to do this, we're first gonna place a block at the end of this rail here. And then above this, let's place in a redstone dust. Hold shift and we're gonna place another block right here, kind of using the redstone dust to place it. And then let's jump over this side and place another block. Now one block above this redstone dust here, let's place on a redstone torch just like this. And you'll see that this will power both of these rails. Now jumping back over here on the end of this block, let's place in a redstone torch. This will power this rail here. And then we're gonna place another redstone torch right here, which will power this rail. And now of course, let's go ahead and test all of the system just to ensure that our carts reach the ends and then loop back around over here. So let's place in two minecarts with a hopper on these two end rails right here. Then let's head out. We're gonna flick both of these levers and head back inside. And we're just gonna watch these carts and make sure they both bounce back this way and it looks like they are both working correctly. I'm not sure if this system is going to work entirely on bedrock, so you might need to add in maybe some more powered rails. Just make sure when you're adding in redstone that it's not touching a hopper, because then it'll turn it off and not make it work. But because both of these are working, we'll know that our fuel and also our smeltable item will be going into our furnaces. And we'll test it all at the end once we get the other side created. Now, the only thing that's left to do over on this side is fix up this gap in the roof here. So let's go ahead and place in some more slabs on these two corner blocks here. And then we're gonna place in two slabs like this. And then in this gap, we're gonna be placing some spruce trap doors. So go ahead and place one trap door here and one here, and we're gonna close those up. And now for this middle one, let's place a trap door up here and then place another one, close this one up and destroy that one. And now while we're at it, let's go ahead and also throw in all of our lanterns. So one block away from the edge here, let's place one lantern. Then we're gonna go right into the middle, place another lantern, and then in between these two, so there should be a gap of three between each of these. So one, two, three, lantern, one, two, three, lantern. And now let's just go ahead and do this on the other side real quick. So slab here, slab here, two slabs, trap door, trap door, close them up, trap door, trap door. Yeah, 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 you get the picture. <laughs> one block away from here, let's place in our lantern, three blocks away, another lantern. And that's all the lanterns done. And now I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this exact same thing on this side. I'm not gonna speed it up just cause I feel like it might be a bit easier to follow if it's not sped up. Even though it is the exact same thing, just mirrored. So let's go ahead and create our little platform like this, our L shape that connects up to the furnace and then underneath our last chest over here. Then let's head back over here, fill in these two blocks and these two, and then fill in the middle one with a block of redstone. And then in between these two hoppers, a spruce slab. Now let's go ahead and add in our rails. So we're gonna place our powered rail right here. We're gonna bring our rails all the way along here. And then once we turn the corner, let's add in our powered rail. Then on top of all of the hoppers, some regular rails. Bring it all the way around to here. A powered rail on top of the redstone block and then some more unpowered rails all the way up until the end. And on this final one, a powered rail. Now for our ore input line, let's go ahead and head back over here. Powered rail, regular rails, all the way up until we meet up this one here. Place in another powered rail. Now let's bring it up along here, all the way along till the final block, which will be another 
powered rail. Now in front of this rail here, let's place in a block, redstone above that, and then on the edge of this redstone, another block. Then let's hop over here, place another block. Above this redstone, a redstone torch, which should power both of these rails. On the end of these blocks here, another redstone torch, and then another one just in line with it here. Now let's also go ahead and test this side as well, just to make sure we got it all correct. So chuck on two minecarts with hoppers right here, flick both of these levers, and then let's have a look-see. And there we go, they're both bouncing back and perfect they're both looping perfectly and now with that the entirety of the build is now done let's go ahead and do some final testing just to ensure everything works so let's turn all of these levers off head back inside might need a little bit of scaffolding just so we can place our minecart with hoppers on all of these powered rails at the ends here then let's head outside now in the left and rightmost chest let's chuck in our fuel item and then it should all get completely sucked out of the chests and into the minecarts with the hoppers and then on the other chest let's place in our smeltable item i'm gonna go with some raw Iron. Wait until all of these are completely empty, just like that. And now let's flick all of the levers. Also, be sure to leave these levers on as long as your thing is smelting, just so that these minecarts do bounce back. And now to confirm that it's all working, all of these furnaces are all turned on. If there's any that are empty, it might mean that there's something stuck inside all of your hoppers. So if this one was off, just make sure to check this hopper and this hopper that there's no items filled up in here. And yeah, so with all of these furnaces on, that means our super smelter is completely working perfectly. We should be getting our output items here. As you can see, it is very quick. We've already almost completed all of the smelting already for both of these sides. And now also, if you know that all of your items are empty from all of these hoppers, you can go ahead and turn off the levers and that'll just bring all of the hoppers back to where they first started, just like that. And now within a couple more seconds, we should have all of our items completely finished. And yeah, so we're pretty much done with the entire build. As just a final note, I will again say that I recommend changing this to suit your biome or your specific needs. You can of course leave it with this kind of block palette. It is very neutral and it will work anywhere, but I do recommend to kind of just make the build your own, make it look cooler. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to leave a like on the video as it helps me out a lot more than you think. And also, if you enjoy my overall content, feel free to subscribe. It is always greatly appreciated. Cheers for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next video.